What is a software QA tester? How to get a job in quality assurance. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you're on YouTube, click the alert notification button and if you like the video, please click like and share. Hi, I'm Kat and I work as a QA tester for Caldor. I studied maths and computer science at university and I find that in that role it really really helps to have the degree that I have although it's completely not necessary at all. Because I work for a tech company any background in technical knowledge is really really useful but it's definitely something you have to pick up on the job as well. I absolutely didn't come into this job knowing everything I needed to know and it was a steep learning curve but the background that I had in computer science really really has helped me so far with the knowledge that I have and how I can apply that in my role day to day. The reason I wanted to work for the company that I work for is because I really, really love the tech sector. I find it really interesting. I find it attracts a lot of interesting people as well. It's really forward thinking and really fast paced. But I didn't want to work for a fintech and I didn't want to work for a company that wasn't... I didn't want to work for a tech department in an ex another company. I wanted to work for a tech and a small business. Um, and so when the offer for applying for a job at Caldwell came up, I was really excited because they're a really small but very um, well-known te publishing tech company. And so they've done really, really well in the area that they focus on. I didn't want to be a developer when I left university purely because I felt that I had other skills that I could offer to a role other than just development work. I wanted to be in a role that um, included a lot of talking to people, thinking about things and being that bridge between kind of biz what business wants and what the requirements are and then what the developers are actually producing. I kind of wanted to be that middleman, middlewoman, <laughs> um, to be able to kind of link the two, use my practical skills and my personal skills at the same time. And so being a tester is great for that because you sit in between um, the project managers and the developers before something goes live. So you end up being that person, that point of call where you are checking before a part of the product is signed off, you are checking that it absolutely does work and it meets the requirements. Um, and so it does involve a lot of talking to project managers, a lot of talking to developers and kind of figuring things out for yourself a lot of the time, but it has meant that I've got to grips with the technology really, really quickly, which has been really fun as well. Each day is a little bit different. We always start every day with a stand up at 9.30 a.m. And in the tech world, that basically means everybody in the team has to say what they've been working on for the last day and what they're working on for the next day. It's all part of um, sprint terminology, which you would get to know if you worked in tech. So um, basically, yeah, 9.30 in the morning, we have a meet up with the, everybody in the development department. So we all know what we're working on for the day. Um, and then usually most days I'll have a separate stand up with my team. There's just three of us. So it's really nice and small and we all got to know each other really well. And we work together really well. And apart from that, it's a lot of looking at tickets <laughs> on Jira, which is again, another very, tech thing um, a lot of companies use the jira software to um, track their progress on development work um, and so a lot of the time it'll be me creating um, testing versions of an app putting it onto a device so either an android or ios or sometimes we do websites as well so that'll be on my mac and i'll be basically checking that new things that have been added or bugs that have been fixed have actually done the job that they're supposed to do. Um, and it's a lot of talking to people and saying, okay, is this what you intended? Or um, this isn't quite right. Do, do you reckon you can have a look at it and go back and rethink it and then send it back to me when you think it's working again? So the best part about my job is that I get to have loads of really cool devices because as QA testers, we need to make sure that our apps work on pretty much any type of device that we support. So because we do both Android and iOS, um, we have to be able to support it on iPad, iPhone, Samsung's, Google Pixels, you name it. 
we're supporting it um and so uh yeah definitely one of the best part was when i get when i got to these brand new devices that i get to play with every day <laughs> Sometimes people underestimate you and your understanding of the technology behind it. And so um, it's about knowing where the barrier is in terms of how autonomous you can be in saying, actually, no, I don't think this is right. And kind of pushing back. I think that's definitely the hardest part is pushing back on things that you don't think are quite right. Because um, especially someone who's early in their career, it's, it's hard to know, is that my place to say that thing? Should I be saying that thing? How do I say that thing without coming off rude or antagonistic but um it's definitely really important in that role that if things aren't right that you you speak up and say something anybody working in tech needs to be adaptable and agile um in the way that they work because things will just appear in the middle of your day that you weren't expecting to happen, especially with a product that you're supporting live for loads and loads of clients, which we do at my company. And you have to be expected to like at the drop of a hat, just jump on and basically like um, firefight all over the place sometimes. Um, so definitely a case of being ad agile and adaptable, but I think also at the same time with tech and with any role really, you're never gonna get it the first time round. It's gonna take quite a few tries of understanding the really um, detailed and complex architecture of, of the product that your your company um, provides. And I, I was a sucker for wanting to understand everything straight away and getting really frustrated at myself when I don't. Um, and luckily I have a very, very nice manager who's always reminding me, don't worry if you don't get it this time, we'll come back to it. When you've seen more of the product, it'll make more sense next time. We can always keep going over things, which I really, really appreciate. And willing to forgive yourself when you don't get things right the first time. Absolutely okay, because not like, it's technology. Nobody understands every single part of it. Nobody does, honestly. <laughs> you just have to be a little cog in that in that machine to make sure that everything ticks over. When I joined the company, they were doing all of their testing manually, which means like each time something needs to be tested, a person will sit down with a device and tap through various screens and make sure that whatever's meant to happen happens. And I have been working on over the last three months automating some of our tests. So um, I've got the ball rolling with that, which is really exciting because once those testing suites are done, we can just click a button and the computer will test it for us. And then the only time we need to worry about it is if the test breaks. Um, so it's really taking that process and putting that automation in the middle that makes it so much more worthwhile for the people and saves them a lot, a lot of time. This ties into the last question in that testing is probably not going to be the same in five years and it's probably not going to be the same in 10 years. And so a career in testing, I think, is going to be, it's going to be set, it's going to be completely different in the future from how it is now. So I can't say any one thing now that you'd be good at would mean that it would be it would add longevity to your career. You should focus more on the core skills which are important in the tech industry as a whole rather than specifically for this role. Um, and that is definitely communication skills, absolutely 100%. Technical knowledge is really, really helpful. Um, a keenness to learn and um, just being a nice person to work with and being passionate about technology, I think that definitely gets you really, really far. When you're passionate about the product, it makes a massive difference to your job, whatever it is. Um, and I've really, really felt that um, when I've been passionate about the project or about the company, it's, it's um, overflowed into how I feel about the role as well. So I unfortunately lost my last job. I was in the middle of lockdown too, thinking what on earth am I gonna do to find a job in lockdown in a pandemic? Um, and thankfully I reached out to one of my old contacts and they actually recommended that I get in touch with Give A Grad A Go. So I looked on the website and I thought, well, none of these jobs are, are great for me, but I'll give it a go, I'll put my CV in. And um, even though I wasn't right for the roles, I got a call from Helen, who I'm forever grateful for, saying, yeah, you're not quite right for these roles, but we really like your CV and we're gonna pass you over to Jo, who does um, place people with your background in the roles. And it just kind of magically happened from there, really. Mm -hmm. 
honestly, I'm so, so happy with the experience I had with Give a Grow to Grow. Um, I've been placed in other roles with different recruitment companies in the past and that really hasn't worked out. And I felt like I could truly be myself and say, okay, this is actually what I'm looking for. Um, and I felt so much support from the company in placing me somewhere that was right for me and for the role that I was look sort of like role I was looking for and the skills that I had. And there was also just a really nice like personal, I just felt like there's a personal touch to the work that they do as well. They really, I do really feel like they care about placing you in the right role. Um, and I am so, so happy with where I've ended up and I couldn't be more grateful to give a grad a go for that. The recruitment process probably couldn't be any simpler. All I did was, uh, yeah, send in my CV for some other roles and I got a call back um, saying, I don't think you're right for these roles, but we think there are other roles that, that we want to put you forward for. And then I got a call from a different recruiter, Joe, um, and he gave me a ring and he was like, look, you'd be great in this role. I really want to put you forward. Um, and I think you could do really well at this company and two interviews and I was it and that was it. It was the most easy <laughs> and at the right time. I was so stressed as well. And he just made, it just took so much weight off my shoulders to know that my my career and my future was in the hands of someone that I really trusted. Absolutely, I would absolutely recommend Give a Grad a Go to friends. In fact, I actually got my brother to email as soon as I got my job, I was like, right, you're also a graduate looking for a job. You need to send in an email and send in your CV. So, um, yeah any friend that comes to me and is like oh i'm really struggling to find a job as a grad i will send them straight to give a go give a grad a go effortless just just the it was just the light i needed in my in my life in the middle of what was such a stressful period being a graduate unemployed and in a lockdown it was so stressful and I, yeah, I'm forever grateful, forever grateful for um, the help that Give a Grad a Go gave me in finding my job. If you enjoyed this video and want to share your graduate career with us for the chance to win £300, click the link in this video's description on YouTube and follow the instructions to submit your entry today.